Well, I'm back. What have we got today? Well, we've got this great big fat piece of metal needs to go inside this great big fat amp. Now, this is a, a Mesa Boogie triple rectifier. It's part of a series. And uh, this first part is to get the thing working on 240 volts instead of working on 120 volts, which is, that's as it as I bought it, if you like, not as it came. Well, it is as it came, I suppose. So the plan is to get this working on 240 volts rather than the 120 that it came with from the factory back in 2000 and early part somewhere. Uh, that's a revision D, by the way. So let's get this thing on the road. I'm going to whip the chassis out and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. It's part of a two or three part series, maybe four parts, who knows, uh, where I do different things to the amp as we go. This is the first one. And here it is, out the chassis. This is the bit we've got to change. This big fat thing over here. And the number on this one is uh, 401706. And that's the, uh, the original power transformer. And it's 120 volts is that one. Uh, now there is a story. If you have uh, one of these, or well, probably a dual rectifier as well that's of this era anything from the end of the 90s upwards to the 2000 maybe 10s or 12s I don't know somewhere like that this power transformer is no longer made which could be a bit of a problem especially if it just blows but fortunately it's not a problem thankfully Mesa Boogie have a, a different one and this one uh, comes from the multi-watt dual and triple rectifier and this is part number 40-16968-561143 that one 561160 so that's long gone this is its replacement it looks pretty similar to me in fact Mesa Boogie uh, did say that it's a direct replacement so we should have no real problems in fitting it should we Let's take a look underneath to see where we've got to go. I'm going to take these tubes out. They get in the way. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to take a few pictures, show them on screen, so you get an idea of how it's set up before we start. Then I'll do the work, then I'll show you a few pictures when it's finished with my friend Phil over there. Yeah, it sounds like a plan. So uh, let me move this out of the way. Let's get the pictures done. We'll have a quick look at what's going on there. And uh, yeah, it all sounds like a plan. Do bear in mind you'll need some some capacitors and also a MOV that works at 275 volts, among other things. Okay, that wasn't too bad. All me and Phil did was cut the wires, undo the four screws, and lift out the uh, Mesa power transformer. That's it. Yeah, so what we've got to do next is get rid of all the wires that were in there and then put in the, uh, the other transformer ready for wiring. It's quite simple really, but uh, before that you want to uh, do the little modifications with the capacitors and the MOV. Because there's plenty of room to get there. So I'll go and do that now. Well, here we are, back up top so to speak. You can see there's one set of wires that I've got over here, <laughs> which is a bit ominous really. But uh, actually, these I don't think these are used. Uh, these are brown and black. Looks to me like uh, they're off something else, because the transformer was off a multi-watt amp. Yeah, so that will be tied up and sealed off and all the rest. And uh, yeah, there's a few pictures on screen right now uh, showing you what I did. You can see uh, I fitted a new MOV in there, MOV, 275 volts, 270, I think it is, 275. There's some capacitors in there that stop things like interference and that sort of thing, uh, which will, uh, I guess, help. Other than that, it was pretty straightforward, the cores are the cores, and uh, they all seem to be pretty much correct, you know, except for this uh, brown and black. 
all the rest seems to be pretty good. By the way, I did take out the rectifier board, uh, with, which is held in place with four screws, and that allowed me to get behind it to do the uh, rewiring at the other side of the board, which there is some rewiring, so that has to be done. What else can I tell you? Uh, well, not a lot really. Other than that, it was pretty, uh, pretty easy to do. Now, I'm not going to spend all day on it, so I'm going to flip it over and do a couple of other things, and then we're going to do a test. Hmm. I need uh, to get the right equipment here to do that, and I'm just going to go away and get it now. Okay, well, here we are with the finished product. And it, yeah, it does work. <laughs> I might be able to hear it. It's only going through a little load and on its merry way, so as you can see it works. <laughs> and I guess if I sort of lean it back a bit and just change the channels, you'll see them go. You can hear them. So it's all good. And as you can see, well hopefully you can see it, it's operating on 242 volts at the moment. Nothing more you can say, is there? It works. <laughs> now then, well what's next? Well I can tell you, I did take a look at the capacitors in there, my little meter, just flip the end of the odd one, and they all seemed okay, actually. Quite nice, and whether it's been turned on much or whether I, I don't know. They're supposed to age, but uh, these didn't look too bad. I might take another look at them in another video, yeah, for lots of reasons. But uh, for now, uh, we'll let them stew for a while. Now, as I'm working through this amp uh, to get it back to where I want it, all these tubes have been out, and my god, there's a lot of them. And they cost a lot of money as well. In fact, these tubes in England are £350, give or take, if you go and buy them from the uh, Mesa Boogeyman. The Boogeyman, yeah. So I doubt many people are going to change them very often. And I want to zoom in a bit closer and just let you have a look at what I found. <laughs> now, hopefully, you can see these tubes, these 6L6s. Play a tune on. Well, that's not why we're here. So let's slip this one out. It looks pretty good. Yeah, no dates on any of these things, which is a bit of a pity. But there you go. Uh, that's how they are. Looks pretty good. Until you come to the next one. Oops. Can you see that? I hope you can. It's smashed off. Yeah, very common. People are just juggling them in and out and uh, well there it is. Naft. And the thing is, if you do get it wrong, <laughs> you're going to have a really, really sort of damaged amp probably. I don't know. And if we was to zoom down the other end to those uh, rectifier tubes unfortunately well that one's okay but one of these suffers from the same problems and there it is see that smashed off not very good and of course not that it matters to me I must say that, but uh, the seller didn't point any of that stuff out, you know, that's how people are. Uh, not telling me they didn't know that all the tubes had got the bits smashed out. Yeah, a little bit disappointing, but uh, thankfully I've already bought new tubes and preamp tubes. And that's, uh, that's the thing. The next thing, of course, is the, uh, the biasing. Now, you, you'll tell me that Mesa Boogie, you don't need to bias them. Well, this one's had a bias mod, scarily enough. 
for some reason and uh, well you can just plonk the mesa tubes in you don't know what that's been set to so you've got to go and have a look and uh, take it from there which is all exciting and there's another pretty obvious thing if I take this tube and just pull it out there it is oh that's got one on well that's okay but look at these things now you could say oh yeah but Tony that's how they are well it is and it isn't if you if you had uh, some Belden ones Belden ones are particularly good so they like jaws and they hold this tight very tight with the likes of these ones look you push them back and they stay pushed back it's not a good idea that isn't especially when you got this number of tubes so what I'm going to be doing is pulling these out and fitting Belden ones they're not actually that expensive either to do but I'll be doing that uh, really in the next video when I do the biasing and the rest of it let's push that back for now well believe it or not uh, we're not going to do any more in this particular video this is video number one of, out of maybe three or four or five or even just two who knows I get like that sometimes <laughs> but uh, that's the end of video one of how to fit the transformer and I've put a few pictures up as we've been going just to show you if you want to really see more about how to do these I did one on a uh, Road King 2 which will be down in the the text see and link across and go and look at that video they're all very similar actually similar is the word I don't want to trouble with this one uh, I've got my friendly Phil who's had a look over it but getting the diagrams uh, forget it <laughs> no there are diagrams uh, around the Mesa don't seem to want to give me any or give my engineer any so we did it without the things like that uh, Rob at the supply company for the the authorized dealer you know repair dealer he was helpful but it's not quite the same as having the uh, the schematic to work from and if you get any problems you can fix them you know well one thing did I have any problems uh, when I did this well sort of uh, you know we've got the on off light at the front you know the one that glows uh, yeah when you fit the new transformer something uh, we missed but when you fit the new transformer it catches on the wires for that lamp yeah and if you don't move it out the way you can find capacitors will warm up pretty quick <laughs> I can tell you well we saw it really quick and turned it off so and then check the cap and it's all good uh, but it did overheat this little capacitor down here on the screen that you see now and there's the picture of the uh, the lamp as it's supplied you know it's already supplied but as the transformer supplied and remember this is a slightly different transformer so bear that in mind won't you if you are going to do any of this it's also been tested uh, on the uh, spongy or non-spongy which was interesting I remember watching a video with guitologist I think that's his name seen him around a lot watched his videos a lot and all that sort of stuff very very interesting stuff that he does and he had a I think it was a dual rack uh, on his bench with all various problems and he was talking about the uh, the spongy or bold switch there it is well, when it's in operating in spongy mode it's it's presenting the amplifier with about the sort of voltages you, you would expect on the input side yeah and I don't mean this input I mean from the uh, PT to the board yeah but when you flip it into this uh, bold mode up go the voltages at least 10 percent maybe 15 they go up enough to matter let's put it that way uh, and he was talking about uh, well maybe you'd be better just run it on uh, spongy all the time because if you do it on bold all the time you're overloading the uh, the amp somewhat yeah that's a thought remember he said it and then remember I said it too 
So how would I score the conversion on the price of the transformer and the rest of it? I'd score it, <laughs> to be honest, I'd score it at 5 out of 10. Sure enough, it works, but where its problem is, is lack of information without you taking this product into uh, Mesa Boogie or some Mesa Boogie service department. There's nothing wrong in doing that, but I've got my own engineer, you know, I've got one. And I thought they were a little bit lacking, bearing in mind that I bought the transformer, but they wouldn't supply even the first part of the circuit diagram so I could, uh, and my engineer, do this. Yeah, so it's a 5 out of 10. Had they been more helpful? Well, and that's not the service department, the, the, the Mesa Boogie service people uh, that are based throughout the UK. That goes all the way back to Mesa Boogie, who didn't want to give me the, little, not even the little bit of the diagram. I thought that was mean. Still, they did supply, but uh, at a price. There you go. Till next time. Other information's below.